Hey, it's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Parblo Coast 16 Pro graphics drawing monitor and let you know exactly what I think about it. Now, I do need to put in my quick disclaimer before I dive into this that Parblo sent this device to me at no cost in exchange for this video review, but they have had no input on my review and they haven't seen this video prior to it being published here on YouTube. Now, what exactly is this device? It's a graphics drawing monitor, meaning it needs to be plugged into a computer. It isn't compatible with any other devices. It has to be plugged into either a Mac or a Windows machine. And it basically is a second monitor that has drawing capabilities. It's not a touch screen, so you're not gonna be dragging things around like an iPad, but you do have that drawing capability and being able to draw directly on your screen is, in my opinion, so much nicer than having a tablet on your desk, drawing on it while looking at a monitor that's not where you're actually drawing. That disconnect has always thrown me off. So being able to draw directly on that screen is so much nicer to get a little bit closer to actually drawing onto a piece of paper or in a sketchbook. The screen itself is about 16 inches, which is why it's the Coast 16 Pro, which is a really great size for drawing. It's very similar to an actual sketchbook. It's an IPS display and it has 92% NTSC color gamut, as well as a 1920 by 1080 resolution. So it's not super high res, it's not like a 4K screen, but honestly, Full HD is plenty of resolution for this size tablet. It also comes with a matte protection film already applied to the screen, which prevents scratches and really is a nice feature since I don't have to put that on myself. The device sits flat on your desk and it has a nice grippy rubber feet underneath so it doesn't shift around. If you want to raise it up at an angle, you're going to have to get your own stand. It doesn't come with one or have any kind of kickstand that comes out the back. I have the Parblo PR112 tablet stand. I don't think it was exactly designed for this tablet, but it actually does a great job and I do use it. There are two different ways of connecting this device to a computer. The first is a single USB-C cable and that covers the video, the power, and the USB functionality but your computer has to be able to supply enough power through that USB-C cable in order for that to work as an option. The second option is to use the three-in-one cable, which is USB-C on the device end and then splits off into two USB cables, one for data, one for power, and then an HDMI cable that supplies the actual video connection from your computer to this display. It also comes with a bonus power adapter extender. If you can't supply all the power from your computer, you could actually plug it into a phone charger and just straight into a wall outlet that way. This is also nice if you don't want to take up two USB spots on your machine or don't have that many USB ports. The pen or stylus that comes with the tablet is fine. It's lightweight, it doesn't feel all that sturdy, but it does get the job done. It's comfortable. It has a nice rubber grip all around the outside. It comes with two customizable buttons right on the side of the pen. No eraser, so you're not gonna be flipping this around to get to an eraser tool, but that's really not a deal breaker for me at all. And it has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is fantastic, as well as plus or minus 60 degrees of tilt functionality, which means that you can use those special 3D brushes inside of Photoshop and it actually responds to tilt, which is great. So what's in the box? Well, obviously you get the Coast 16 Pro, the drawing pen, the pen stand, which actually doubles as storage for the eight extra nibs for replacing once they wear out, the three-in-one cable and the USB power extension cable, the USB-C cable on its own, a drawing glove, which is fantastic that they include that because it keeps your screen a little bit cleaner and it helps your hand glide around as you're drawing, a microfiber cleaning cloth and the instructions for how to set it all up. Now, one major gripe that I have with this device is the actual USB-C ports on the side of it. They're extremely deep and the cables that come with the device are the only ones I've been able to actually plug into it. You can see just how much longer this skinny part of the USB-C cable is on the Parblo cables versus a much longer USB-C cable that I already had and wanted to use. Unfortunately, there's no way that I've figured out how to get around this issue. So really you're stuck with the cables that come with the device. And unfortunately, they're not that long. So it was kind of difficult for me to get the cable to the back of my computer, which is on the floor behind my desk and still have it reach to where I wanna be able to comfortably draw. Now, I was really excited about the single USB-C cable functionality. I wanted to be able to just plug that into my computer with one cable and not think about anything else. Unfortunately, my computer didn't supply enough power and I have a Puget Systems tower. I thought for sure this will supply enough power, but Sure enough, it doesn't. So I was forced into using the 3-in-1 cable with the HDMI and two USB ports. And that power supply USB cable had to be plugged into an external device. Even with that standard USB port being used, my computer just wasn't outputting enough power to keep the device on. 
However, I did try plugging it into my Razer laptop and my MacBook Air, both of which were able to use the USB-C cable, no problem, supplying enough power. What are you gonna do? Now, honestly, I think that's what Parvlo had in mind with this cable system. That's probably why they're not so long because they're imagining many artists are working on laptops these days and can just plug it in on the same desk. So that's just something to keep in mind. As far as input goes, aside from being able to draw directly on the tablet with the pen, there are six touch sensitive buttons at the top left corner of the display. And the display vibrates as you touch them to give you that feedback knowing that you've actually made contact. I think I still prefer physical buttons, but these work just fine. And the buttons have physical icons with lights behind them showing up for brush size, zooming in and out, undo, and the hand or pan tool, which is okay, but I would much rather just have blank buttons that I completely customize because if I change these tools around using the Parvlo app to customize the shortcuts and the icons don't match up with their functions, that's just a little annoying. I'm sure you'd get used to it, but I still wish that they were just physical buttons that didn't have any icons on them at all. There are also two buttons on the side of the display, one for just turning the device on and off and the other for navigating menus, controlling the display options. Now, one thing that kind of does annoy me about these display settings is that if you disconnect the tablet from power, it will reset everything that you've set up. So none of those settings will stick. If you just put it to sleep and wake it back up, they will retain the settings that you've customized, but it's really annoying to take it away from your desk, unplug it and then bring it back the next time and have to redo all of those display settings. For me, it's really just adjusting the backlight. It's a little dimmer than I want to at the default settings and having to re-increase that brightness every single time is just a little bit annoying. Now, using this device is totally enjoyable. I've had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. The pressure sensitivity is very responsive. The tilt function works just like you would expect it to. I haven't seen any discrepancy between where I'm touching the screen and where I'm actually drawing on the canvas in Photoshop. And everything is easy to customize inside the Parblo app, including the pressure sensitivity curve. And you can even use the interactive window right inside the app to test it immediately and really dial this in to fit the way that you like to draw. And I wanna be fully transparent, I am not a great by hand artist. I'm not an illustrator whatsoever. I do not have great drawing skills and learning how to animate frame by frame is very intimidating to me, but I can do some very basic rough stuff. And even though my artistic ability with the pen is not that great, I can tell that this device is responsive to what I'm doing and actually drawing what I'm expecting it to. And I have no doubts that in the hands of a much more capable illustrator, this could absolutely produce beautiful artwork and animations. The list price on Parblo's website for this device is 399 US dollars, and you can even get 5% off right now if you use the code in the description. Thanks to Parblo for that. And on Amazon, it's also $399. I think this is a fantastic deal for what you are getting. This is a great tablet to work on. I've had no issues with it while using it. And for this price point, I think it is a great package. As long as you can live with those little quirks of the shorter cables and the display settings not sticking, I think this is a fantastic option for having the luxury of being able to draw directly on the screen. It's worked great for me drawing inside of Photoshop using Time Lord to transfer that back over to After Effects. And for someone with actual drawing skills, I'm sure this would be a great device to use for illustrations and animations. So let me know what you think about the Parbolo Coast 16 Pro. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much to Parblo for providing this tablet for me and giving me the time to get used to it before I could develop this review and present it to you. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.